Hello everybody and welcome to Jeff the Pharmacist. So today I want to talk about a new diabetes medication called Adelixin. So Adelixin is in a class of medications called GLP-1 agonist. Uh, that's very similar to uh, Bieta or Victoza. I've talked about Victoza before and the side effects are all very similar. Um, Adelixin isn't that much different and that's why we would call it a Me Too drug. Uh, most of the uh, differences with these medications for patients are probably going to be in their um, insurance, like whether your insurance covers it or not. But I can talk about what are the basic like side effects and kind of what does the drug say that it will do for you. So uh, the drug being a G GLP-1 agonist, what that means is that it acts like a hormone called GLP. And GLP is um, a hormone that increases the amount of insulin that comes out of your pa your pancreas. Um, in diabetes, kind of the whole story around diabetes, uh, a lot of it is centered around the pancreas because the pancreas is responsible for secreting insulin. And diabetes will often start to occur when your body cannot um, produce enough insulin and your tissues cannot respond to that insulin. That's basically um, kind of where the mismatch occurs in diabetes. So what adelixin does is it increases the amount of insulin that um, comes from the, the pancreas, but it's, it's kind of neat because it's, it, it does it in a way that sort of responds to the amount of blood sugar in your blood. So it doesn't increase insulin indefinitely. Like if you have kind of a low blood sugar, it shouldn't continue to work unless you're on other medications that also reduce your blood sugar or also increase the amount of insulin that comes from the panc pancreas. Those medications are like, um, that we call them insulin secretagogues, basically drugs like glomeparide, which, which actually increase insulin that comes out of your pancreas. And um, so by itself, it wouldn't cause too much hypoglycemia, but with insulin or glomeparide or drugs like that, it could actually increase your chances of getting hypoglycemia. So one other cool thing that GLP-1 agonists like Adelixin do is it causes something called delayed gastric emptying. So delayed gastric emptying basically means that um, after you eat, the food sticks around longer. And um, that can be kind of an uncomfortable sensation for people. And that's why people basically have to start taking this in a, uh, they start out at a lower dose and they try to treat higher because people experience a lot of uh, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea when they start the medication. Now usually that subsides and it kind of reminds me a little bit of metformin where people when they start it, they experience a lot of nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. But um, after time, people kind of get used to it. On the other hand, if you have a lot of um, vomiting, diarrhea, and nausea, what can happen is you don't drink enough water and that's responsible for another one of the side effects of adelixin, and that is acute kidney injury. Now, it's not a common side effect, but it can occur if you have extreme um, stomach upset and you're not drinking any water. And basically, uh, the reason that happens is pretty simple. So, so if you think of the kidneys uh, as a big filter, basically what they do is they take, they take your blood and they filter out things that you don't need in the blood, toxins and things that'll kind of upset the basic acidic balance in your body, just things that you need to get rid of. So that's what the kidneys do. And basically they just take the blood and they filter through and, the filter, and then the filtered blood goes back into your body and kind of keeps your blood clean. But if you don't have enough water, toxins can build up in your kidneys and stay there and cause kidney damage. So that's why you need water to kind of flush it out. So if you are dehydrated, that can cause kidney damage and especially in people with diabetes because uh, often people with diabetes already have some kidney damage unfortunately and that can just make it worse. So it's important to um, stay hydrated uh, even if you are experiencing these uh, GI side effects. If they're very bad you would want to contact your uh, doctor and you know say you know do I need to stop taking this because I don't feel well and often they'll tell you to stop taking it because um, because you're not able to drink water. Now, medic, uh, Adelixin and other medications in this drug class have kind of an interesting origin, um, and I, I find it very fascinating. They all come from the saliva of the Gila monster. 
So Gila monster saliva has uh, a drug similar to the human hormone, uh, a GLP-1, but you can't give people human hormone as a drug because the body breaks it down super quick. You would actually have to have like an IV of GLP, human GLP-1 hormone to have any kind of a positive effect on diabetes. But researchers, and I think one of them was a Dr. John Eng, who's an endocrinologist and found that the Gila saliva actually caused uh, problems with people's pancreas so, or caused inflammation of the pancreas. So he wanted to see why, um, why it would affect the pancreas and if there was a possibly a drug there. And there actually, obviously there is. So I think it's a very fascinating um, origin. Often with medications, they're not actually just kind of thought up out of nowhere. Often they have a natural origin. Um, Metformin was actually a natural product and it was actually used for diabetes um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And then we sort of discovered how it works um, in modern times. And I think it, it became a drug in like the 70s. So um, there's a lot of drugs like this that have a, a natural origin. People actually go into the Amazon like GI, uh, people go into the um, Amazon like uh, Indiana Jones and discover different medications or possible candidates for medication. So I think it's kind of interesting to uh, talk about the origin. So what does Adelixin um, basically do for people with diabetes? So um, it basically drops A1C almost a whole point, um, about uh, eight tenths of a, of a point uh, on the A1C. That is a significant reduction and it is, uh, it is definitely uh, useful to reduce you know, diabetes and it's a, it's a useful medication in that regard. Now some other uncommon side effects, but um, things that, that we saw with uh, Adelixin were, it can increase the amount of chance of getting a, a pancreatitis. So there were more pancreatitis cases. I think it was 21 cases versus 14 in the placebo. And it was a large group of people so it's it wasn't that much of an increase but it was um enough to be a concern and it was seen in it was seen in all of these similar glp1 medications so i don't think it's a one-off also people uh, may have experienced gallbladder issues now i found it interesting that adelixin did not have a black box warning for thyroid cancer um specifically something called uh, men2 which is a a genetic disease which causes people to be more prone to getting thyroid cancers. So Adelixin did not have that uh, black box warning, but I think it is still, it would still be a concern for people that have a concern about thyroid cancer. This has been an issue for them. So um, I would keep that in mind certainly. And I did discuss it more in one of my other videos. I talked about um, thyroid cancer with uh, these type of medications. Something interesting occurs with protein-based drugs. So Adelixin is a protein-based drug. Um, insulins are protein-based drugs. Your body will actually develop antibodies to the drug and can actually take out and destroy the medication, rendering it useless. So most people that take the medication do have some antibodies. Um, and they found that in 2% of the people that had antibodies, it was significant and actually reduced the effect of the drug. So it's definitely something um, that is kind of interesting that comes up. Um, I don't think most patients know about it uh, or think about it. And, um, I don't think their doctors tell them about it because it's probably not, that they probably don't think it's that, that important for them to know, but it's certainly kind of interesting that that could be why a drug stops working for you. And just lastly, uh, Adelixin uh, has some drug interactions because it stops the stomach from emptying. I'm not going to go through all of them, just saying that there are drug interactions with it because it affects absorption. So I'm talking about oral drugs, you know, pills you might take. Um, so those pills might be hanging around in your stomach longer, so that can affect um, how the medication behaves in your body. So it's definitely something to bring up with your pharmacist when you get the medication and if you're taking a lot of other medications. So I hope you all found this interesting. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. It would be an honor to have you as a subscriber. Um, I love getting subscribers. It's super cool. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks a lot.